there's really not that much that's different with the layout. The difference is in the dimensions. This is still going to be about 9.6 inches here, okay, uh, in these directions. Uh, but this direction is also now 9.6 inches. It doesn't have to be, but generally it's going to be smaller, whereas before with the ATX board, that was 12 inches. Now it's just going to allow it to fit inside of a smaller form factor, and it doesn't have to use a smaller power supply, but generally vendors will put a smaller power supply on here. And you'll also see that that's uh, justified by the fact that there's not as many slots here either or connectors, so it doesn't really need as much power either. Another characteristic of these boards, however, is that it might use a riser here. So instead of putting a device here in this PCI slot and then this one right here, instead what it can do is to put something in there sideways. And the best way to show you that is to go to www.formfactors.org. This is a great website to go to. If uh, on your weekends you just like to do nothing more than study form factors and study up on it so that you can impress all your friends. Well, they have all kinds of documentation there. And here's just a diagram of what I'm talking about. Here we have an ATX board. It's a micro ATX board. Notice the location of all the, the parts here, as we've seen before. But now notice that within one of these slots, like this PCI slot, it has a vertical device that its only purpose is to accept other cards in this orientation instead of up and down and vertically. Now they're put in there horizontally. Why, why would we want to do that? Well, the purpose of this is to use a, l a smaller form factor. By doing this, we can create or use a slimline case that takes up less desktop real estate or that can fit in vertically between uh, a smaller space than we would otherwise require. Uh, this is what we know as a daughter card, by the way or some people call them daughter boards, and you'll also hear them just referred to kind of generically as riser cards. So consider all those things to be the same, daughter card, daughter board, or riser board. And there's different kinds of risers that you can get as well. Now notice again here that we have these, this daughter card rising vertically out of the motherboard, and then these additional cards here plug in horizontally. These are, this goes into a PCI slot, and these devices are also all PCI slots. The disadvantage to this is, notice that there's another PCI slot underneath these, I can't use that anymore. Also, these daughter cards do not support other things such as AGP, so it's strictly only for PCI devices. Now, there are a couple of other kinds of cards that can rise up out of a slot as well. It's not out of a PCI slot. It's out of dedicated slots that are kind of short. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of those. Here we would have, for example, an AMR slot. This is a 46-pin slot. Notice that it's, its size compared to this PCI card slot over here on the right-hand side. Now what we do with these things here is we put in another card right here and it sits in vertically up out of the computer. This is a way for manufacturers to add additional features. For example, they might want to design the motherboard separately from the modem that they want to install. For example, if they had to put a modem integrated into the motherboard, then they'd have to get FCC approval and they'd have to go through their certification process and so forth. Well, this way they can design the motherboard separately and go through its own rigors, and then separately they can get FCC communication approval for a riser card, in this case an audio modem riser card. And it would be a way of adding additional functionality without having to take up a PCI slot or without having to integrate that device, like a modem, into the motherboard. And although you need to know what an AMR slot and, and card is, they're really not found too commonly anymore on newer productions. Nowadays, they're being replaced in favor of communications and networking risers, or CNRs. I think I have a graphic of that slot here as well. The CNR here, this is a 60-pin card. It's also smaller than a PCI, but it's bigger than an AMR. It has similar kinds of requirements, a similar kind of function. However, it's also more current, and it gives more advanced features in addition. For example, you can use that to add to the sound card capabilities of a motherboard, which might have integrated sound already into it. A, a, a CNR can add things like Dolby Digital Sound and things like this. Other advantages of CNR cards over AMR cards include things such as uh, support for hardware acceleration. So if we have uh, of some kind of a function on that card that requires processing power, we can offload that processing power onto a dedicated processor for that device rather than depending upon the CPU to do it. It also has, pl has plug-and-play compatibility, and it has networking support also. And before I go on, let me briefly address something else called a new low-profile extended form factor, or also NLX is what they're also known as. And with these, we typically use riser cards, or again, daughter cards, daughter boards. And very commonly, they use those because they're for low-profile, really small 
form factors and cases. And there's really not a whole lot otherwise that you need to know about NLX other than the fact that they use those r types of riser cards and that they're usually pretty small. Now another part of the exam objectives for A plus is to be able to identify a BTX board. Now let's compare this with the board that we saw a little while ago. Remember, first of all, the most obvious to me is these connectors back here for our PS2 connectors here and parallel port and uh, audio devices and network cards and all that. Look, it's over here on the left. Remember the ATX, it's over here on the right. Well that, first of all, is a dead giveaway that we're looking at a BTX card here. Also the power connectors over here, the uh, connections here for PCI and PCI Express are also over here. This two, these two sides are basically just flipped around. Also another dead giveaway for a BTX board as opposed to ATX is that no longer are these expansion slots uh, at a right angle to our memory slots. They're both facing the same direction. They're lengthwise this direction. Uh, also we have our serial ATA or SATA uh, connectors here in the uh, upper part right here that we see as opposed to being down here and look where our processor is it's right here and by the way m the reason why it's put here now is because on most cases there'll be a fan right in front of it and it's gonna get the coolest air coming in the processor usually gets the hottest so it's most urgently in need of cooling and that's why it's placed now right in front of the fan other characteristics of BTX is that we have our floppy controller right here, a floppy uh, ribbon cable that would come out of this connection. And look where our IDE connector is now. It's way over here in the back next to these other serial ATA connectors. Well, why would they put this clear over here, by the way? Well, <laughs> I don't know. It seems like it's further away. A, a lot of times, cases are de designed smartly now so that uh, it's not such an issue. But in previous really old connections with AT boards, for example, this location for an IDE connector would have required that you get an extra long cable. And the specification for IDE only calls for up to 18 inches. Uh, but this should be plenty, plenty of space here now in our current implementations. So let's review real quick what things we can use to identify. Number one, the location of this block of connections here, our expansion slots. These are two are reversed. We also have the location of our serial ATA or SATA connections right here, as opposed to, as also we have some over here. Also our IDE connection, these two things here. Also our IDE connection is kind of in a wacky location over here. Our processor is located here, and our expansion slots and our memory are both going the same direction now. And then much like the micro ATX board, its main characteristic is that it's smaller. There's a micro BTX board here. Its characteristic, of course, that it's smaller than the full-size BTX board. Notice that the placement of all the components generally in the same types of location that we saw for the other one. Uh, the micro ATX, however, may also include the CNR right here because, of course, we, need to ha we might want to put a riser in there so that this BTX guard, this micro BTX board, would fit into a smaller form factor case. Now let's move on to something else here called a chipset. A chipset is an integral part of the motherboard and their ICs or integrated circuits that allow PC components to communicate with each other. Everything ultimately has to go through the chipset. It represents kind of the data pathway for all I.O. that takes place on that computer. If you want to put it in kind of human terms to make an analogy of it, you can think of the chipset as the central nervous system. You can think of the motherboard as the skeleton, and you can think of the CPU as the brain. And you can see how integral and important all of these things are. The chipset is integrated into the motherboard. And let's take a look at one of the first technologies that we have here, and this is something called